Inside this old time capsule is a new 41 year old forgotten Yamaha. And it's been waiting in storage all this time for us to unbox it and then attempt to ride it home. But first, Greg, what are you doing here? I came to help. Oh, come on, come on out. I'm not sure I can. Get out of that car, Craig. So we are in Detroit Motor City, and surprisingly, we have, we've not been robbed yet. And we are at Vintage Motors, where we just bought this awesome Yamaha. There's the owner right there, and he's got, he's got one of the coolest car collections ever. Ventique. Ventique. Oh, shoot, I said it wrong, okay. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine, when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. And we are at the awesome Ventique Motors, where they have a really cool collection of stuff, and this awesome motorcycle that we just bought from them. I'm excited. This is by far the best motorcycle in the crate we have found this so far. This concerns me a little bit. So if you guys remember the last motorcycle that we bought out of a crate, it had some mice damage. This is not good. Whatever was in here, they ate the entire context of what was in here. I don't know what that is. We're gonna find out. It looks like they stopped eating on the end. Are you ready? I'm ready. This is engine number 00397. Let's unbox, let's see what's going on here. Wow. So this is what was holding it up in the box. These things were once like this. Little corner pieces. Is that interesting that, that, that Yamaha used wood? It is interesting. It would make sense, it's lighter, first of all. What awesome thing can we do, can we make with this wood? Ben, are you gonna make a 41 year old? We're gonna make a spear gun. A 41 year old spear gun? And then are we gonna, are we gonna auction it off on the website on our channel? A 41 year old Yamaha spear gun. Could it be your greatest spear gun you ever made? All right. This would be what, Japanese, Japanese koa wood. All right, so how, how, do, we, how do we, uh? I don't wanna just tear into it, like. I almost just wanna put the top back on and put it in the trailer. No, 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 we have to. I don't. There we go. Check that out. Don't rip the tape, Craig. Too late. Don't rip the bag. Uh oh. What? 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 Okay. I thought that was mouse fur at first, oh, it but it's not. Animal. It's a nest. And we got some evidence there. It's not the worst we've seen, but we've only just <laughs> opened it yeah. up. Wow, this is cool, though. All right, look at this. This is called Ferrobrite. Place opposite side against metal. Do not unwrap until ready for use. Volatile corrosion inhibitor. It's got a US patent number on it. Oh, so th th this, should, this covers metal stuff. Oh, wow. You know what this reminds me of? When you're pulling the trains. Oh, like the Lionel trains? The Lionel out trains of the... out of the styrofoam? Yeah. How is this stopping corrosion? Was it like a moisture barrier? Everything over here looks amazing. My attention immediately went right here. Look at that Honda or uh, Yamaha yellow and black manual. All right, so hold on a second. Let me, uh, let me fill you guys in a little bit on the story of this motorcycle. So you can't buy bikes in the crate anymore. I've asked, I, like, we think somewhere around the 80s, they said you can't do that. Now back before then, you were able to, 80, early 80s and before, and the owner was actually a local guy, and he bought he bought two of these. We saw the other one get for sale at Meekum. Yes. So he bought two of them, one for him, one for his son. Then they both put together and ride around. His son was not that interested. All right, so this, this thing is a lot more assembly than I thought it did. Yeah, I thought it was gonna be pretty quick, but. Here's all the tools you need, Craig. Dan, reach your hand out. Reach your hand out with no body and feel that. That's not bad, right? This actually has 0.8 miles on it. See that, Dan? Actually, it's 0.8 miles on it. Ow. So as we started to unpack the bike, which was supposed to be the most preserved, pristine Yamaha SR500 in the world, we found a startling discovery, and possibly what I feared the most outside of 80s claymation. This is where they lived. Is that all stuff that they brought in yeah, there? I think so. I'm just hoping we don't find a snake in there. That's a huge nest. This, this is corrosion? Yeah. They didn't have Farber Bright on there. That could just be like mouse pee. Really? Yeah, smell. 
Yeah, see, look, there's number ones, number twos there. So those are probably number ones. That was the mouse's bathroom. Yeah, it was. <laughs> look, they taped this to the tank. Yeah. I got mine. Wow. This color is amazing. I was not excited about it when I first saw it because it's just like silver, but it's a really good looking color. Oh man, look at that. Beautiful. First, first of all, okay, can I just say that it should be clear by now when the bike is in the case, what's the assumption? It's perfect. It's perfect. And everyone's like, don't ruin it, it's perfect. You get, anything you're gonna do is messing it up. No, 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 we are saving this bike from being eaten from the inside. This is one out of two that we've done. Bikes and beards rescues. Uh, let's keep on bringing everything down. Now, I don't know that much about these bikes, but I know someone who does. And that someone is voiceover Sean. The SR500 was made from 1978 to 1999, but it was only released in America from 78 to 81, only three years. It's what we would now define as being a classic Japanese cafe racer, if there ever was one. It was originally developed under the design credo of easy to use, but the bike actually was anything but that. It was so hard to start that even Yamaha's technical director busted his ankle trying to start the bike, which is why this is one of the only bikes that has a sight glass showing you where top dead center is because unless you start it using a special sequence, it's not gonna start. And interesting enough, the SR500's only real competitor was the Honda FT500, the last bike we unboxed. <laughs> I'm hoping if I dip into the bathroom when I come back, you guys will have it out of here. So you know what's really interesting with these? 78, 79, they had disc brakes front and rear. 80, 81, they went to a drum brake in the rear. Oh, it was a drum. Yep. Nice. I'm only saying that because obviously disc is better, but uh, last time we had a bike with all drums. With all discs. With all discs, the, um, we couldn't get any of the brakes to work. Yeah. 40 years later, man, and I'm the first person putting this front brake caliper on. That's crazy to think about it. I know, right? Can we get that fender off the tire? Let's not break that. Oh, the fender back there. Must be a Japanese thing to, put your, to store your fender back there. Looks like the box wants to come with it. You're right, Dan. Okay, now. Oh, oh gross. <laughs> First of all, look at this rat's nest. That is huge. So we get a lot of heat from unboxing these bikes, but from the outside, this box looked like it was perfect. But in reality, they came up from the bottom and made a pretty big mess inside. Hopefully, they didn't chew through the wires, which would be catastrophic to this motorcycle, and then it would probably stop us from actually getting this bike running. But all of this is insignificant compared to our next problem. I'm dying to see what's inside that tank. Did you see the keys? Mm -mm. We can't find the keys to it. There's a tech from the 80s who worked on Yamaha. We know exactly where the keys are at. He's yelling it into the, his computer. Now don't lose these. In 41 years when you actually sell it and put it together, you might want them. You got any old Yamaha buddies, Craig? Uh, so we looked for the keys for about 20 minutes and we still couldn't find them. So Craig decided to call a friend who worked for Yamaha in the 80s. Maybe he knew something that we didn't. Where would they hide the keys? Most of the time they were sticking in the ignition. All right, where else? Not in the switch. It's not in the switch, it's not in the helmet lock, and it's not in the seat lock. But in the top is the owner's manual. Plastic bag, yellow. Yep. Yep, yeah, but no, yeah, see, that? see that, but no key. Yeah. Yep, that's all intact. Sadly, Craig's friend was not able to help, but we could always hotwire the bike to get it running, but that doesn't get us into the fuel tank. So we decided to keep on working on the bike and maybe the keys will turn up. They look pretty, they, 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 I mean, look at them. They look good. Are they probably out of date? Probably out of date. Um, we got metal valve stems. Let's put the tire on. Yeah, let's. Is that bolt holding it in there? It doesn't make any sense. Oh, it's just a little ball. There we go. Craig, it's a see-through battery. See-through? You ever see that? No, I can't see it if it's see-through. Oh, that's so cool. Craig, did this come with any um, acid? What are we doing with acid? We need to do acid. We need... 
We're in Detroit, that shouldn't be hard. Acid, acid, not fentanyl. Not fentanyl. Nice little door. It's got its own little uh, cotter pin to keep it in there. It feels such a, like a quad. This is such a quality feeling component right here. And then you have your cool little see-through battery. That's a nice battery. Look at that. No way. What? Look at this. Look up in there. Look, you see that? That's the key. <laughs> it's in the headlight. Yeah, I was gonna say that. I was gonna say that because yeah. there was Joey's jam stuff oh, in, like yeah, right. all those wires. Stuff. Why would they put it in the headlight? Oh my gosh. We should put the front fender on first. Woohoo! 41 year old chrome. And everyone in the 90s always tried to paint over him, including myself. Oh, shoot. It said 4R9 inspection. What's the bottom one say? America. 4R inspection certificate. How cool is that? Craig, you looking at what the value of these things, like in the wild with miles, 40 years old? I haven't. We paid 12 something. Right, but it came with mice. And that cool looking battery though. That was worth And no one farted on the seat yet. You say that. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna head out and grab the acid or the battery or something. Oh, all right, cool. Cool. Okay, so Sean said we blew the budget on this video buying that bike. So we ran out of money to buy me a bike to ride home too. But we're running to the dealership to get some acid or a new battery and we're gonna see what we can find. Shh, don't tell Sean. How you doing? They're so big. No way. I wonder if this is for sale. There's not a license plate on it, that's a good sign. Sean said we're out of money, but I think I'd get in trouble if I don't buy this bike. While Craig's doing that, what I'm gonna do is bust out my M1 Moto Fast Detailer and see if I can clean some of the stuff off. Ah, look at that. It's like glass now. That is amazing. So we continue working on the bike. We put the taillights on and get the turn signals on and get the turn signals installed and wired up. And then I continued cleaning the bike using the greatest motorcycle fast detailer ever. M1 Moto Fast Detailer. Cue the pitch guy voice. M1 Moto Fast Detailer. It's a real product for really awesome people. Available at m1motogear.com. Link below. Also, it's great for birthdays, Father's Day, Mother's Day, New Year's Day, Old Year Day, when your husband comes home from work, and Grandparents' Day at school. You, Craig, don't cut the blue wire. Don't say that, Dan. I already, I already did. Which ones go in the back? The short ones or the long ones? What is? Where are the front ones mounting? Oh Soft. my gosh. We never got gas. Really? We don't really? have gas. We never got gas. Oh my god. Well, there's a pump right there. Yeah. So this goes in here, and then this piece fits inside there. <laughs> it's cameraman abuse. We need gas and a battery, and we're ready to fire. Are we? Yeah. Let's get gas and air for these tires. First, I want to look inside that fuel tank. So the last time we opened up a brand new 40-something-year-old motorcycle, we looked inside the gas tank, and it was, it was pretty bad. It was, it was not good. So I'm hoping this is at least better than that. Oh, my gosh. That's horrible. That is the cleanest fuel tank I've ever seen in my life. Ever, ever, ever. You can see like the like the metal like etchings. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay, so there you have power wires and there you have a ground right there. Nice. And you put, oh sweet. Man, that's a good looking motorcycle. Hi, aye, aye. That's cool, right? 
I should have figured out what color is on the back of them. So I probably did this wrong where like it's left turn signal, so I'm turn the right one, but the right one on that one, the right one, but the left one on this one. I don't mind keeping the, keeping the other drivers on the road guessing, you know? You don't want to reveal all your secrets. We need gas. Oh, chooching it's trotch. So you guys want to see something really cool? I told you, Craig, it's not appropriate for YouTube. So, I mean, Detroit's not as bad as people are saying it is. I mean, I only observed like three shootouts. I only participated in one of them. It's not that bad. I'm not trying to live here though. So now we have fuel for the bike and Get all the bike control. is completely put together. Now we're gonna find out whether the mice chewed up the wires and whether this thing's actually gonna run and hopefully get me back home to Pennsylvania. You guys wanna guess how many uh, kicks it's gonna be? Craig, what's your estimate? Okay, so get it compression. Yep. Okay, now lead off a quarter, quarter, and then give it a boot. Two. Hold on. You didn't turn the key on. No. This counts as one. It's gonna kick a lot. You get it to compression. All right. And then you pull it and bleed about a quarter off and then back up and... <laughs> that sounds good. Clutch feels good. First ride in 41 years! Uh, choke, take the choke off. All right guys, so we successfully got this 41 year old motorcycle running and then tomorrow I'm gonna ride this thing home. It's gonna be awesome. And I'm gonna show you guys the bike I just bought at the dealership that Sean doesn't know about. What'd you get? You're gonna have to wait and find out. Watch this video. Subscribe.